On the morning of September the 11th, 2001, 2,976 people from 93 nations lost their lives in New York at the Pentagon and on Flight 93 that crashed in Pennsylvania. Today we pause to remember that moment and to honor and pray for those left scarred by these terrible events. That morning started like every morning for most people, getting up to see a beautiful late summer sunny day. And then suddenly, things changed forever. At 8.46 a.m., terrorists flew American Airlines Flight 11 into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. At 9.03, the terrorists crashed United Flight 175 into the South Tower. At 9.37, hijackers flew America Flight 77 into the western facade of the Pentagon. 125 died in the building, plus 59 passengers and crew on the plane. At 9.59, the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. As many throughout our country, as well as overseas, watched in horror and shock on television. At 10.07, United Flight 93 crashed in a field in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. Later, we learn of the heroism in rushing the pilot in the hijack cockpit and the hijackers' courageous action that saved perhaps thousands more at the terrorist intended target. Forty passengers and crew died. At 1028, the North Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed as the world watched. Eventually, we learned that 2,753 persons were killed as a result of the attack on the World Trade Center. The more than 9,000 persons killed or injured makes the 9-11 attacks the deadliest terrorist attack in world history and the worst foreign attack on American soil since Pearl Harbor. They weren't the only victims. Those who died left behind family, friends, and other loved ones who now have an emptiness that cannot be filled. Over 7,000 service members and DOD civilians have been killed and over 50,000 wounded during the global war on terror that is now formally drawing to a close. Nor were the passengers on United Flight 93 the only heroes that day. All of the first responders who selflessly risked their lives to save thousands in the Twin Towers, rushing in when everyone else was trying to get out. All the relief workers who worked tirelessly for weeks, first seeking survivors and then trying to bring dignified closure to the families of those killed. Many ordinary citizens in New York City, in Washington, D.C., and throughout the country who lent hands to those impacted by the events. We can never forget that day. We must remember that day. And so today we remember the families who lost loved ones in the attacks and in the subsequent war on terror. The 13 service members recently killed in Afghanistan by a terrorist bomb are the latest. We remember those who survived their heartbreaking stories and that their lives are forever scarred by these moments. We remember their pain and the anger and bitterness that we felt in the aftermath. We remember that we live in a broken world, God's perfect creation corrupted by human sinful rebellion against God. We remember that our God is a God of redemption and restoration who loves the world and sent His Son Jesus 
to bring reconciliation and salvation. We acknowledge that human efforts to repair and heal inevitably fail, but God alone can save and heal us. The only true lasting solution comes through God's Son, Jesus Christ. While we as Americans are justifiably proud of the country we live in and thankful to God that we live here, 9-11 and its aftermath remind us that our ultimate hope is found in God alone. And that our ultimate loyalty and allegiance is to God's kingdom, not any single nation, political system, political party, or leader. Join me now in a moment of silence, remembering and honoring the thousands of victims as well as the heroes of 9-11 and its aftermath and seeking God's continued comfort for us all.